festive sea slug, Hypsilodorus festiva, is one of the many colorful members of the clade Nudibranchia. There isn't much information about the festive sea slug itself, beyond its identification characteristics and locality, the Sea of Japan mostly, but there's quite a lot of lovely things I can talk about with regards to nudibranchs in general. Nudibranchia is a subclade of Gastropoda. The gastropods are essentially all slugs, snails, land or sea based, as well as limpets, sea hares, and some other oddities. Classification into the various subclades are based on morphological and evolutionary differences. Nudibranchs themselves are quite varied. They're covered with various different types of wobbly bits and odd extremities, and they have some rather marvelous colors. It's hard to generalize them all across the board, so it helps to talk specifically about two of the most common superfamilies of the nudibranchs, the dorids and the aelids. The dorids, including our lovely festive sea slug here, possess external gills, the feathery things in the rear, as well as what are called rhinophores on their head, tentacle-like protuberances. The aelids are typically covered in their own finger-like appendages, rather a lot of them even, and they have less visible gills. Of course, there's a ton of other variants and lots of variation even within these two families. It ends up, hundreds and hundreds of million years of evolutionary history can make genetic variation go a little crazy with rapid reproducers like the sea slugs. Who knew? The nudibranchs are pretty slow and rather brightly colored. It's easy to spot them. They also have lost their shell through evolution, which would make you think that they're uh, pretty vulnerable to predators. However, their colors actually act to their benefit in a lot of quite strange ways. Many species do have actually some sort of camouflage. Bear in mind that coral reefs are pretty colorful and bright themselves, so the sea slug is pretty at home. The contrast in color patterns of sea slugs also has the benefit that it can make some animals think that they're poisonous, or distasteful. Now the reason this probably works has a lot to do with how diets work for animals in terms of evolution. Basically animals tend to only eat things that are familiar with them. That's what's safe. They have an evolutionary tendency towards things that they're less poisonous to. Now, and the weird colors, the strangeness of sea slugs might actually make it so that no animals try eating them because they're so foreign and alien compared to much of their normal diet that they're not really willing to take the risk. Of course, some sea slugs actually are poisonous, so you have that there too. Now, the way that sea slugs get poisonous is actually quite interesting. Many sea slugs feed on hydrozoan jellyfish, which tend to be covered in lots of very nasty stinging cells. Now when the sea slugs eat these jellies, the stinging cells are stored in the body walls of the, the sea slug. So basically they themselves gain the jellyfish's stinging ability. Now these specialized cells can allow nudibranchs to do something even odder. When they feed on plants, it's possible for them to take in the plant's chloroplasts and store them in the same area that they would normally store the stinging cells of the jellies. This essentially allows them to limitedly photosynthesize, allowing them to generate their own food. Some also generate toxins by feeding on sea sponges and combining the various toxins of the sponges into a kind of super toxic, evil toxic, sea slug poison cocktail. Some also release acidic mucus, which is pretty gross. Nudibranchs are very pretty, to be honest. You wouldn't think it, really, that they'd be so pretty, but they are. And they're very, very chill to watch. Just, just watch them go. Just watch that slug go. You keep on trucking, festive sea slug. You keep on trucking. <laughs>